All right, here we go. Nick Cannon, welcome back. Man, we back once again. Once again. Getting into some more trouble. <laughs> you know, and you just got back into town. Yeah. And I'm like, you want to do another one? And you're like, yo, I'm free at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> Straight off the plane from Dubai. Let's talk. There's a lot going on. I know, right? <laughs> well, well, first of all, congrats on The Masked Singer. Thank you, man. Damn, that's like a phenomenon right now. Number one show on television. The number one show <laughs> on television. Yeah, network television. We killing. Wow. So when they you said look... I couldn't do it. <laughs> they well, said yeah. I couldn't do it again. I mean, after you left... Uh... America's, uh, America's got, got talent. talent. Yeah, you're like fuck that check. Yeah, they and look what happened. Me out too. They they thought a lot of people, especially within the industry, there was like, it was people close in my circle, people that were like, even like high up executives. Like, man, you can't give up a job like that. It only comes around once in a lifetime. And we understand your principles. Man, standing firm on what I believe. Fuck them. And then even like people would like like executives be like would say stuff like. You know, you know, that's not that's not gonna come around again, or you know, like, like watch, I'll show you. It ain't you, y'all just didn't employ me. You know what I mean? Like, I I know how to make these vehicles work. So, to jump off that show and go to a, and be a producer on a show and create a whole new wave. Oh, and and top their ratings. So you're not just a host. You're an actual producer. Yeah, I'm a as producer well. on that thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, like that's that's <laughs> like that. I wasn't a producer on America's Got Talent, so aha. Uh -huh. That's why I told people like I, I ain't, I'm never. For, I'm always bet on me. Like, I'll walk away from that check and go create something. Well, you know, and this is something we've covered in the past. This is why it's so important to have a financial base yeah. in what you do, because if you were like, okay, look, if I leave America's Got Talent. I can't pay my mortgage. Yeah, They're gonna repo kids. my car. Yeah. My my baby mama go go take me to court and baby take my mamas. passport. <laughs> <laughs> baby mamas, you know, no, I gotta keep this money going because yeah. I'm paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, you would have stayed. Yeah, I said I've been broke before. I ain't scared to go back. But even like all those responsibilities do take you. You That's take that saying. stuff in your mind. But having the financial base. But even I mean, you gotta think too though. Is that's a lot of money I walked away from. My like, legitimately, if I didn't hustle up and figure it out, like my lifestyle would have had to be a little different. I would have had to be a little bit more frugal because if you used to eight figures coming in and then they don't come in, it don't matter how much you got saved up. At at some mm -hmm. point, you're gonna be like, "Yo, I was used to living like this, and this ain't move." That's a, that's how a lot of these entertainers go broke so quick. Because you think like, man, you just had a hundred million dollars, yeah, and I had a hundred million dollars worth of bills too. So when you think about, yo, if we living up here because this is coming in, when this stopped coming in, my lifestyle didn't shift, and that's how you you go broker quick than somebody who's on a, a monetary stipend or a budget that is fixed for their income. Yeah. The thing about having absorbing amount of money is you, that's not a fixed income. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and it's like what Andre Three Thousand was saying. It's like, you know, if you, you know, I still live in check to check. If you don't move your feet, then I don't eat. So we like neck to neck. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's if you used to every because it costs money to live this lifestyle. So I, I took all of that into consideration. But I was like, yo, I'm, I, I step back for a minute. And the, it was funny because the year that I did walk away from AGT, I um. Everybody was like, tighten up the belts, lace up the bootstraps. And that, that year I ended up making probably five times the amount than I had made the previous year at AGT. Wow. And it was just because that mentality was like, yo, I gotta hustle up. And, and you know, that was the year of the tour and went even extra hard on while and out, start getting the music stuff popping, start signing more people, start doing more deals and I looked up and it was just like, oh, that's that's how you get it. Like, so, and sometimes change evokes the hustle. You know what I mean? Like, and and I knew I was like, yo, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let what everybody wants to happen to me actually happen. And that's even when I went over there and did that deal with Fox. And I was like, yo, let's figure this out. Like, and I just that's and that's where the mass singer came. Out. I just was hustling over there, and that was a a property that was you know large overseas. And it, once it was presented to me, I was like, yo. 
if it's working over there, I know I put my sauce oh, on it. Oh, the Max, the the Mass Singer was an overseas show. Yeah, originally? Mass Singer is oh. a global success in like ah. Korea and Thailand oh. and a bunch of places oh, over it's like there. An Asian thing. Okay, yeah. okay, I can see that now. Yeah, because right? they're big on the cartoon characters and all everything. of that. So yeah, once okay. I saw the it, like, if you look up online, like one year the Mass Singer had like the biggest YouTube video in Asia and all that stuff. So I was like, yeah, this there's something here if we could. Finesse it and finagle it ourselves, and that's what a good producer does. That's what somebody you be, believe in a project, you surround yourself with a dope team. Number one show on television. That's what's up. And then you have the talk show coming, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, we we've been developing that for quite some time, and um, so some some new uh things have have come about to where, you know, as fun as late night is, uh, it might expand into you know other day parts. I'm trying to do something that nobody's ever really done before. Uh and that's just there's a there's an audience that's fiending for me in daytime as well as late uh, as late night. Hmm. So so a daytime talk show? But I see that's I don't I don't want to be defined by <laughs> this man-made time, lad. Okay. I'm trying, it it could be, you know, it's one of those things where in in the syndicated world um when you allow the distributors or when you allow the the affiliates to choose what time you come on based off of what's best for their demographic and in, in, in their space. So you make something for them and say, yo, you could put my joint on at 11 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock in the daytime. And there's not a lot of people that can live in both of those spaces comfortably. Mm. You know, and like you wouldn't watch Regis and uh, Ryan, or Regis, uh, Ryan and Kelly uh, at 11 at night, and you probably wouldn't watch Stephen Colbert at 11 in the morning. You know what I mean? It's like, but there's some people that can live, well, there's not some people, but I'm trying to be one of the first that can live in both spaces. And then even also, and, and make the show at night different content than the one in the daytime, but still give you both shows. So you hmm. shoot a show, and like, all right, this is the cut for the late night. This is the cut for the daytime. This is the, the daily cut that we're going to put up online. So it's like really, I told you, man, I'm chasing Oprah in a big way. <laughs> like so, and we yeah. saw this all culminating to obviously like the stuff I do with the podcast, the radio stuff. Like it's really like a one one man media shop that we're trying to put together. So that's why that's even why it's kind of taking so much time because it's really a, a big 2020 launch is what we're trying to get it popping on. Okay, so next year it's gonna launch. Yeah, because I mean, I got I got so much stuff I got to do finish off this year. We got the, the tour starting back up. We got. You know, a few more seasons of wilding out. I always keep telling people I can't, I can't be an old man wilding out. I only got so much time left. So, and they, they just keep ordering, you know, more and more episodes because it's, you know, number one show over there. So, I'm, so I got, I'm gonna try to bang as many wilding outs out before I start my next show. And then also, I graduate, um, in 2020. So the 2020 semester starts in a couple of months. So. From Howard. Yeah, so I got a, uh, I got a lot of schoolwork to do to finish finish this up. So this, just the rest of this year is really just preparing for everything at the top of next year. You know, music and stand up and all that stuff. So my my next year and a half is already flushed out. 